Professor, you also have uh, 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And is it uh, good morning? Still good morning? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you. Listening to Professor, Professor from Pierre, it appears my topic is, after all, not an isolated one. Toddling along the beaten path, Ghana's emerging issue of religious influence in schools. I, without reaching a conclusion of an issue, it appears we are both toddling along. Um, Ghana, like any other country in Africa, has quite a number of problems already. We have problems of, we have political problems, ethnic conflicts, where such conflicts often result in violence. We have chieftaincy problems where contending individuals to schools often take up arms against each other. We have land problems. We have political problems, two political parties at each other. We have issues of poverty. And indeed, we do have some, some religious problems, mainly intra, what I may call intra-religious problems, where one church splits up after some problem within the church, or where you have the Muslims, the Sunnis, and the Shias at each other. We do have those problems. Those, for now, do not threaten the political entity as such, and we've been managing them. But when recently there was this brewing controversy between the Muslims and the Christians, it became a matter of concern. More so when it has to do with what happens in our educational institutions. So when yesterday the last question was posed by Nico to the panelists, whether there is the possibility of interreligious conflicts in Namibia. Immediately, my mind went back to Ghana. And I was answering for Ghana just as I was listening to the panelists. And my answer was, well, some years back, I would have said no. But now, I'm not too sure. It's yes. And then, my next question, which I asked myself was, what has changed? I would have said no some years back because I do hear of people who say, well, I went to, I'm a Muslim, I went to a Christian school, that didn't change me into a Christian, or I'm a Christian, I attended an Ahmadiyya school, but that didn't change me into an Ahmadiyya or anything. But then the question is, what has changed? What has now changed? Then I asked myself three or four questions. Are we seeing a situation where religious leaders are hiding behind religion to enhance their own economic and perhaps political influence? Yesterday we were told that the state is very clever, that the state brings in or rises on the back of religious leaders or the churches, or the other religions. Is it not the case that at times the religions rather would want to ride on the back of the state for influence? That is the first question I was asking myself. The, the second one was, is the declining situation, economic situations in our countries, issues of poverty, frustration, could they be those that are feeding into these issues of religious intolerance? The third is, is there a rippling effect of the religious, of the happenings in the religious fields in, in other parts of the world in our otherwise religiously peaceful countries? And the third, the final one is, are we 
somehow becoming more and more fundamentalist, particularly as Christians and Muslims? These were the questions I was asking myself as I pondered over the situation in Ghana. As I said, we do have intra-religious problems. But then, just a few months back, there was a petition presented to the National Peace Council. The National Peace Council is a government institution uh, established to, as the name goes, to monitor conflict situations in the country and as much as possible put in place mechanisms to prevent them resulting into uh, or bursting out into full-fledged conflicts. And it is manned by prominent religious leaders from both, particularly the, Catholic, the, the Christians and the Muslim groups, traditional leaders, eminent members of the society that form the group to monitor what happens in the society. So a petition was presented by the uh, Muslim caucus in parliament, that is members of parliament who are Muslims, as Muslim caucus in parliament, supported by the Ghana Association of Muslim Students. Their, the petition was to the effect that there are obvious infractions on Article 21 of the Constitution which guarantees freedom of religion. Their argument was that in the schools, particularly in the secondary schools, many of their religious adherents were being forced to practice religion, religious practices that were not of their uh, faith. For instance, being forced to take part in assemblies where prayers were conducted or being compelled to attend regular church services and uh, all that. A few weeks, just about a week or so after that, after, the, after that, there was a demonstration of Muslim students in the western region of Ghana on the same issues. A few days after the submission of the petition by the groups I mentioned, the, a group of Christian leaders also submitted a petition to the same body that in the consideration of that petition, the, the National Peace Council should not forget to also look at the other side, where some Muslim institutions were forcing non-Muslims to put on particular dresses and to take certain courses that they were not uh, otherwise prepared to have taken. In addition, the Christian group also pointed out that they established schools, what we call mission schools, and they have an imprint on those schools. Those schools were established to preach their values, and therefore if a parent enrolls his or her child in that school, then that child might be prepared to accept those values and follow what is done there. The, the, the same, the quotation they gave was that if you go to Rome, do as the Romans do. Now, the, the events, as, a, as you can see, are unfolding. Not too long after that, there was a suit filed in the Supreme Court of Ghana by someone whose name doesn't sound like a Muslim. But if you read the, 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 the terms of the, 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 the claims in the suit, it is clear that the claimant is complaining against the alleged emphasis given by the state to Christian religion, to the Christian religion in public life and also in the educational system. You know, the interesting point here is that the, in Ghana, the two major religions, Islam and then the Christianity, do have more roles to play in public life and in education 
can do the either minor religions, including the traditional religion. But this other minor religions don't complain. It is rather the bigger ones that rather keep on complaining. The argument, as you can see, in both the petitions and the suit in court uh, is that Article 21, Article 21 of the Constitution supports freedom of religion. Now, the practice of forcing children in mission schools to attend assembly where prayers are, Christian prayers are given, or the practice of students in Muslim schools being asked to put on certain dresses was against Article 21, or is against Article uh, 21. It will interest us to note that we have mission schools which were established by the churches, and even at times we have the, those established by the Islamic religions, but they, were, they are fully funded by the state. Then we have state schools, schools that have no religious connections, and then we can have private schools an institution that I can establish if I have the money with no state sponsorship. Now these are the three types we have. The problem mainly seems to be with this, what we call the state schools and the mission schools that receive or subventions from the state. If the state is supposed to be circular, how can the state fund an institution and that institution will be seen to be supporting a particular religious belief. Now, if you go back into history, even during the colonial period, there was an ordinance that prohibited schools from discriminating against children from other religions. That is, children not of the states, of the, of the missions faith from attending such schools. And after independence, there was the Education Act 1961, which specifically provided that no child, no body, no student shall be prohibited from attending a school for religious reasons, and no child shall be compelled in any such school to uh, adopt or to practice a religion that is not of his or her uh, faith. That was the law. Unfortunately, in 2008, this particular provision was removed from the, from the new education law. Nobody knows how that happened. Of course, there, there, there is a suspicion that it was forced in by the Christian uh, by the Christians. Now, the Ministry of Education has also come out with what one may describe as guidelines as a result of as a result of some complaints, some of these complaints, the Ministry of Education came out with some guidelines. With your permission, if I may read this one for that. It says, Management, that is talking of the Ghana Education Service. Management therefore reminds all his or first and second cycle institutions that the GES policy on religious freedom in schools remains in force. This policy was made in accordance with the provisions made in the 1992 Constitution guaranteeing freedom of religion, worship, and belief in Article 21. Furthermore, it is wrong for any head of institution to deny the right of any Muslim student the practice, to practice their religion, which includes wearing of the hijab. In addition to that, there 
was the guideline that each school should have in place a system where, where schools, where children of different religions should be under the control of a teacher, preferably a teacher that belongs to their faith or their various faiths. Secondly, there should be opportunity for those children to also have their own special religious programs when the others are having theirs. Now, these were the guidelines of the Ministry of Education. But it appears these guidelines are not followed. Now, I mentioned earlier on the, the Peace Council, the National Peace Council. The National Peace Council, when it received the petitions, brought together stakeholders to a meeting. And the communique that came out of the process was that Number one, there should be established a special body that should be on standby to receive and address this kind of matters. Number two, as much as possible, the Ministry of Education should come out with a clearer guideline as to how to handle matters of religion in the schools. And as I said, the matter is before the Supreme Court. And I understand it has been slated to be heard somewhere either this month or uh, next month. Now, the examples are clear for us to see. If you read the very important book by our good friend and bread, you will find examples of this in other jurisdictions. In other jurisdictions, either they have left it to the, to the law to address, or they've left it to the court to address, or by dialogue. In the case of Ghana, I would say that we should leave it to the court to address. Because what I see happening is that we are beginning to have a number of fundamentalists, people who control schools, who no matter what kind of dialogue you have, they will do their own thing. They will continue to do it. And that is not going to be good for, for us. We leave it to the court. And I'm sure when the court decides, the court will now look at the general situation at the international level look at our law which clearly guarantees freedom of religion, look at what happens in other jurisdictions, and I tell them, because I was part of the, of the uh, forum, I told them, I'm sure that when the Supreme Court comes out of its decision, neither the Muslims nor the Christians will be happy with that decision, because it may end up being one of the extreme, perhaps no religion in our schools. That is why perhaps uh, uh, Phil is saying that in South Africa you want religion in the schools. But I'm sure if we leave it to the courts, the courts may come out with that extreme position that religion should be part of the schools so that we have peace in our countries. Thank you very much. Thank you.